Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. Welcome to Dumb SEO Questions, episode 378. Each week uh, we meet here to answer the questions uh, dealt with on the Dumb SEO Questions Facebook group. With us tonight we have Tim Kappa. Tim is uh, CEO of... Um, OnlineOwnership.com. He's based in Corby, about 100 miles north of London. He's also a Google product expert in the Google My Business community. David Roseanne is, uh, oh, missing the questions on the screen, are we? Just hang on a minute. Sorry. Uh, yeah, we went through last the whole of last week for that. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I don't know what happened there, but anyway, that should fix it. Um, and now, David Razam, uh, a leading uh, internet uh, marketer. Um, he's based in West Sussex in the sunny south of uh, the UK. Um, beside all the chalky cliffs and um, Masataki Wasa is webmaster of uh, wasaweb.net. Uh, he's uh, based in Wimbledon, uh, a suburb of London, and uh, he uh, uh, is a Google top contributor on, no, a Google product expert on the uh, uh, AdSense uh, community. All right, our first um, question tonight is um, um, any advice, it's titled any advice on uh, how to rank in uh, Google Map Packs. And um, it goes, Kwame Ofori goes on to ask, or goes on to state uh, Google Map Packs for a home service business in multiple cities. Ah, okay. So, a uh, home service business in multiple cities. Mm. Um, so, it, you should ideally have um, an actual, you know, uh, an actual location within that city or cities um, for your GMB. You know, obviously, it's showing showing in the maps. Um, trying to rank a, um, I don't know, let's say dishwasher installer um, that serves London, but also having him rank in Brighton when he is, uh, you know, even if he sets his location is is going to be fairly difficult. So the, the quickest and easiest way there is obviously to establish a, a location in those cities. Having said that, you can still you can still do you know um, you can still do very very well if you actually create um, decent location like you know city location pages service pages um, on the site um, that actually provide value to that. Um, you would need a location in the area to build citations for that particular business serving that particular area. Um, but if it was one singular one, let's say in one city, you wouldn't be able to build citations for it for another city because of course, citations rely on, on NAP, which is your name, address, phone number, etc. cetera. Um, so that's where if you were going to do that, you would then could do citations for that. But essentially, Essentially, if you only had one business, but the city wasn't too far away, et cetera, et cetera. And just remember, you know, there's no point in trying to rank for a city elsewhere if you can't actually service that city. There's no point, yeah, uh, because it's bad for customers. They phone you up, go, oh, can you come in? And you're like, no, we don't do it. So, yeah. Um, but essentially, the way I would do that is I would create a city location page provide unique information. Of course, your basic service is going to be the same, but you can you can make it unique. Um, 
you can by unique you can uh, provide a list of the team members for example that work in that city or service that city this is john he lives here you know uh, he's highly experienced technician this is james he's blah 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 um you know and those of course would be different to each uh city um you could if there are there any specifications in that city are there any different kind of things that you need like are there any particular planning or licensing laws applicable to a city that may impact the service um if you're a plumber like you know is there a hard water area soft water area um things like this and then you continue to build um information or content around that particular area and city so uh like i said let's say you you know you're 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 you're, you're a washing machine guy you could provide you know create resources around washing washing machine supplies and parts in that particular city um you know which would all which would all be provided on the on on the, the location page you know you would have your content you, and and people could click through to specific content on it and it all basically works to create you create a, an entire silo from content to to that city location page um but of course you're providing useful content you know all sorts of content around it um uh i don't know uh, you could yeah, different all sorts of you know you would have to put your thinking cap on frequently asked questions for that particular city um and location you know even going breaking it down so let's say you know you are a dishwasher repair guy but if your dishwasher's knackered and you want to get it you know you want to buy a new one for example um where where can you dispose of your your old dishwasher you know even though it's not necessarily um it's not necessarily related to your actual dishwasher repair the person that you provide the information to and they go ah oh, right i can use that and then they realize oh shit, i need someone to fit my dishwasher well, they've just read the article, you just provided them with the information on where to get rid of it. And boom, you know, you've created that brand affinity with them. And with a bit of luck, they'll get hold of you now to come and actually fit the new one they buy. So it's, it, you know, you need to start, but you're providing this for specific city wide, which all leads to your location, your city page. And of course, that's, that's how you're going to work it for, for local. Thank you, Tim. Uh, any more from anyone? Okay, let's go to number two on our own list. Uh, it's from Marie Sa, and uh, she asked the question, what has your success been with link building? Uh, she said, I made a list of the top 10 publications I'd like to get a link in and started reaching out to them, but have not gotten any response. Can you all offer any tips on how to get editors to link to your site in their articles? No, <laughs> I can't make any tips. Imagine put yourself in the uh, in the position of editors of top sites. How many people like you send uh, requests for links? You you just put it straight in the bin. You've probably got filters that put them all in the spam bucket. There's unless you've got something really special to offer, why should they ever link to your to your web website? I'm sorry, I don't want to be rude or down on this, but you know, trying to build links is really a thankless task. You can get links from crap sites that will possibly mess up your own uh, standing with Google. But if the sites are good, then, you know, your, your requests are just one amongst thousands. So I can't really give you any, um, any advice except don't waste your time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, totally. I mean, uh, this this is the thing, you know. 
unless you are literally that is your day in day out you are literally selling a link building service you know then you should obviously be um you know pretty aware and you over the years you would have built up your own um sort of network uh of of who you could approach and things like this but if you are you know think if you're actually providing seo for a client as such 100 percent what david said don't just you know don't literally waste your freaking time on that you can you can go down you you know provide and I've and I've never and I've never bothered doing that. Um, I've always we've always looked at creating great great resources on site that people can link to. And this it's just really is that you know it's just that's just what we do. You provide great resources on site that people link to, um, and you know links. There's people about links, 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 links. I'm like, yeah, you know what? How come I consistently over time rank clients for some of the most competitive stuff on the planet and I've never, he said, never looked for a link. Well, when I say never look for a link, that was ever since basically, you know, I got slammed in the old days thinking about links, links, links. And of course, when um, when Penguin came along, you know, I I, I basically uh, I got I got some sense slapped into me because I, I re really started looking at looking at things without link building and how do people naturally and how do you actually rank sites? How do you make them the best possible in 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 that area, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. And yeah, so I can quite happily say I haven't built a link in you know or looked for a link in ten years in that sense and consistently rank sites for competitive terms because you provide resources that are linkable. Yeah. I well, yeah, time flies when you're having fun. Um, uh, you're, you're saying 10 years. That was about when we all met, wasn't it, um, about then? Yeah, yeah, totally. Totally. I mean, at one stage, I had like four sites sitting on a manual penalty, man. <laughs> I don't go down that road. I've, you know, ever since then, it's like, no, 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 no. No matter how clever you think you are, you know, and unless that is your business, unless that is your absolute business of building links, creating PBNs, which are, you know, pretty much, lit, well, I'm, I'm never going to say untouchable, but, you know, um, unless that is your, your absolute skill, I, I would just take your time and effort and, and 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 look at the client's resources and build that up make them linkable yeah well marisa i hope um, that you found that uh, useful um let's move on to number three on our run list from rodrigo bueno um it, it's titled that needs rank both in the us and australia uh, Tim's favorite countries. Um, anyway, um, Rodrigo said, for a website that will be selling both in the US and Australia, what's the better option for ranking in uh, AUS? One, uh, a separate domain, domain.com.au, a subdomain, au.domain.com, and a subsection, domain.com slash au. Cheers. Um, okay, so this would be my two cents, and there, there could be loads of different ways, and I'm sure other people have loads of different things. Essentially, Australia and the US are both English. Yes, there might be some very tiny differences between some US language, and there might be some very tiny um, differences, differences in Australian, right? But essentially, 99% of it is going to be freaking exactly the same. Your home, your everything. So I would just use your, you know, um, your, your country 
and use hreflang to denote which page for which. So it'd be your main domain forward slash au for whatever uh, or, you know, uh, so it'd be dot com forward slash um, au forward slash buy my pink elephant and the US would be, you know, dot com forward slash US forward slash or I think it's ENUS or well, US would be your URL and there'll be buy my pink elephant. So essentially it's exactly the same, but then you're using hreflang to denote, to denote which country should be displayed in the other one. Oh, and your domain I would say would be .com. Yeah. That would yeah, be my I two cents on it. Yeah, I think I'll go along with that. Um, unless you've got a lot of, uh, a lot of resources, uh, then perhaps, um, you should uh, set up and maintain two separate domains. But um, I, I think unless you've, you've got a, um, a big budget and a big business, um, I would do what Tim said. I, I think that uh, there's so much to be said for just having one website. Um, so I, 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 that, I would say that. Um, with the proviso that if you have the resources to set up and maintain two uh, two domains, two websites, then go down that route. Jim, you would know this, but um, how much slower would a site be if it's hosted in the US and you're in Australia? Oh, it's really um, uh, negligible. Um, milliseconds, you're talking the difference. Um, there's, that's, not a, that's not a bottleneck. Um, but for Google, if you want um, uh, to be um, strong from Australia, you've, you've really got to be hosted in Australia. Um, um, or you, or you won't be in the race. Well, I suppose you could um, have a server in the States and in Australia and distribute. Yeah, but then, and the, 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 there is the other thing that um, Australians um, would prefer a .com that AU. And that's changed over time, over 20 years uh, um, at one stage, um, particularly in the, the early the earlier half, like they say the first 10 years, .com um, was recognised as the, the top domain. These days, if, if you don't see a .com that are you, you're, you're in, in, in Australia, if you don't see a .com that are you with a, with a website or an email, you, uh, you are immediately suspicious. Um, well, the suspicion is the first first thing anyway. You just feel don't feel comfortable, and uh, it, 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 you, because there's so many sites that impersonate others um, or impersonate other sites. Um, and then um, the, the dot com versus the dot com that are you. Um, is is not um, not the way to go in Australia. So that's it's pretty easy to scam an Australian then. So all I can do is just dot, dot com dot au and um, chuck an SSL on it, and I'm a for away then. Well, the thing is, if you if you don't have um, an Australian business number, you can't get a dot com dot au. So. You, you need a, a valid Australian business number to actually get the, the domain issued to you in the first place. So there's that. Um, but, of course, um, uh, I wouldn't say that it's easy to scam an Australian. <laughs> but that's interesting because then if, you know, he could get a .com.au and then it might be worth it. I mean, if, it depends on how large the Australian market is for the for the business. But if it is a reasonable size, um, 
then it, it may actually make sense to get a .com.au. Yeah, um, and, um, yeah, I mean, Australia is just about the only country that, you know, everybody's not dying from uh, COVID. <laughs> I thought you just had to shut down another one recently. Hey, no. Yeah, yeah no. you had to close a fucking whole city, man. Filthy well, bastards. Wash your hands, man. Wash just, your hands. The whole state, actually. Yeah, Victoria um, last night uh, went went down. The whole the whole state is in total lockdown. Well, not total lockdown, but it, it is. Um, the border is closed and. Um, there are some uh, areas of Melbourne that, that uh, are in full lockdown. Anyway. All right, so, so will we move on to the next? I'm going to record that as a yes. This one from Leanne White. She said, I've done a lot, but it hasn't had any effect. Welcome to my world. Um, she said, I, I migrated three sites into one a month ago um, for different cities, but all with related keywords. Um, and I did all the correct forwarding. All the links have updated, etc., to the new site. But it has stuffed up the ranking for just one of the directories. The other two are fine. Uh, but one of them, which was at the top for a number of keywords, is either on page two or I cannot even find it in the search engines. Uh, as I have been, as I have paying clients uh, advertising uh, their uh, business uh, on this website who are now getting hardly any hits, I'm getting a little desperate and thinking about waiting another week or so. And then if it still doesn't improve, migrating it back to the original domain name and hope it will go back to its normal ranking. I've made a lot of improvements since the migration, added videos, a blog, PDF, small wording, checked it with Screaming Frog, etc. but it hasn't had any effect. Um, has anyone any experience uh, uh, or with this or any suggestions? Mm, it's a bit of a bit difficult to diagnose without even uh, understanding what the other two domains were that she migrated into the other one, and when she's less lost keywords and what like I don't understand. Where did you have three domains literally for the same thing? in the same city and um, you've now, yeah, I mean, I, yeah, we kind of need a little bit more information. Um, but let's say like, especially the domain, let's say domain A the, is the one you migrated everything to. Domain B was the actual one that was showing in that city. And now domain B's page, you've migrated to domain A. Now you're expecting domain A's page for that city to be appearing because you've migrated domain B's to that, you know, you 301 redirected it to that one. I mean, I don't understand, like, how you did it, why you did it, you know, which particular page. And so there's a lot of kind of variables there. Um, Yeah, I, I, it's difficult to know what to do, what what to make, uh, how to make sense of this, but I, I'm, I'm worried here that uh, that what has ended up here, or what what could have happened here, is that uh, you've ended up with Google thinking you've got a lot of duplicate content on here, because if they were on different sites, but if they've gone onto one site, um, Google might be thinking, "What's going on here? This is this is very similar the the stuff about um, uh, 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 about Chinese restaurants in 
London is that very similar to the Chinese restaurants in Birmingham or whatever. I'm not without knowing what what the content is and what the sites were, but what hits me is perhaps you've inadvertently set up a load of near duplicate content. But that's just a guess. Um, we we need to know some more. Uh, I don't I don't think it's I don't think it's to do with how you've done it. I, I suspect it's what you've done rather than how you've done it. Yes, it is a difficult one, isn't it? Um, yeah, look, uh, all I could say to Leanne is, is that um, to go back to that question in um, um, the Damasio Questions Facebook group and uh, add some more detail to it. Yeah, what would be really helpful is when you say, okay, you lost ranking for a particular city for a, for a keyword. Well, explain what, what three domains were initially there, which one was for that keyword. Now, which one is your main domain that you might, do you know what I mean? Give us like, so we can actually look at a particular page level rather than an entire massive domain. And if we can kind of figure out just from potentially what may have gone on from from a city for a keyword then that could be you know be looked at from the other perspective thank you tim anybody else okay let's go to number five on our run list this one from our good friend george g it's a change of address tool question uh, he said, I'm migrating a .co.uk to a UK domain. I had the setup with just 301 for a few months. Everything worked just fine. I saw all the links from .co.uk on the UK, .uk domain in the console. Once I initiated the change of address in the console, after a few days, all links from the .co.uk were not present in the UK anymore. Only the UK links were... Uh, uh, were there. Um, it, has anybody uh, done this before? Is it normal? Um. I'm, I'm a bit concerned about, um, I saw all the links from .co.uk on the .uk domain in the console. Uh, all the links to the .co.uk domain, to the UK domain? Surely not. Um, I'm, I'm also worried about why you would want to do this in the first place. I know we have this horrible habit of saying, uh, of not answering the question and going off and looking at something more fu fundamental, but I wonder what, um, what advantage um, George is thinking he would get with migrating from a .co .uk to a .co. UK domain because uh, I can't I can't see one. Um, a few days, all links from the .co .uk. And so I'm 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 confused. Uh, am am I being stupid, Jim, or am I just? That that would never be so, David. Um... <laughs> and you, I, I can be confused. Okay, maybe not stupid. <laughs> well, George is is also he's he's um, um, he he. I'd use the same word to describe him as I would to describe you. He's an expert. Um, 
I, I, um, I'm not sure. Um, I, I'm not sure what he's he's meaning by this uh, either. Um, I must have missed something. George, I, I'm sorry we've we've let you down. We we uh, can't answer this one. I think Tim has been called away to a phone call. And David and I, we've done our best. Um, Yeah, with, with the change of address tool, uh, um, it 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 shouldn't you shouldn't lose any um, links or, or whatever. So uh, it might be a bug. It might be something wrong. Strictly, you should you you should get those those links to your dot your dot co dot uk page um, changed to your dot uk page. You know that this is the the, the the 301 linking uh sorry a losing link juice idea as some people would say um you would want those ideally you want those links to the dot uk domain but um mm -hmm. but it's whether we're talking about links from or links to <laughs> Yeah, George, I'm so sorry, mate. We 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 um, should do better, but we can't with without um, more clarity. Is that fair, David? Yes, that that's fair. I'm I'm not sure I'm interpreting it correctly, and it, I think other people have been confused because there weren't any other uh, answers to speak of. So um, perhaps a bit of clarity will get lots of answers. Okay. Uh, number six in our run list is from Nathan Nikolai Gady. Um, it's titled URL Masking, Good or Bad? And that is the question. Uh, Michael Martin has said, um, can you describe what you mean by URL masking? And Nathan Nikolai Gady said, uh, domain masking or URL masking is the act of hiding the actual domain name of a website from the URL field of a user's web browser in favour of another name. Now, this is, um, you know, I, oh yes, I am, on. I am on. Now this is something that, that is um, probably some, something, something for someone more technical than me to, uh, to answer, and, but I'm going to dive in anyway. Um, it's certainly a swamp of nastiness, potentially. There are umpteen ways of doing this, as I understand it, and the chances of doing it wrongly are, um, are fairly high, and if you do it wrongly, Google will not like you. Um, so I will say URL masking bad. Um, can someone more technical call me out this one? I'm not so sure about technical, but um, I think the question I would have is why is he doing this? What's the need for doing it in the first place? Um, surely there must be a reason for doing this. And I would like to know the reason behind it because this forwarding might be the wrong answer to the question that hasn't been asked if that makes sense there, there are loads of old styley black hat seo things that, that uh, 
that, that go with URL masking in, in, in my brain. Um, and perhaps, um, perhaps that's what Nathan has been reading, but that would be just a guess. No, I mean, I'm, I'm not saying I'm slightly confused because he mentions Google domain C name um, or domain forwarding, and then talks about using Google Sites. Um, So, in that sense, you know, if domain forwarding, because some um, sort of registrars would allow you to essentially redirect, but that's not the case here. Um, if the C name is sort of attached to Google Sites, then it should be the domain name, and that wouldn't be a problem. Um, uh, I, I think scrolling through the uh, questions and answers and things here um, uh, Nathan says so using longer URLs using Google sites is not so bad so it seems he's he's trying to shorten his URLs yeah but I mean it depends on what method he's using I mean a popular way of doing this is, is is to enclose the the site in a one pixel frame set, um, and um, you know that's just ridiculous. Um, Google uh, for a long, long time couldn't even uh, uh, follow what, what was in the frame set. Um, it's not a good idea. No. Yeah, this is what I'm saying. That for me, that this kind of idea is associated with a load of rather rather bad bits of SEO yeah and the the, the warning signs is going and it, if Nathan is only trying to shorten the URLs uh, you know it depends what these URLs are like if they're full of variables then maybe you'll be uh, in the poo but you know it's it's not going to make your SEO task um, any easier to, to mess about with the URLs, in my opinion. Yeah, and I, in this instance, I think, because the same or similar question was asked previously, hasn't it? So it would really help to have the actual site in question, because at the moment, we don't know what exactly that forwarding entails. And we don't know what purpose, except for shortening the URL. Um, so without seeing the actual site in question, it's, it's, it's a bit difficult to say a lot more. Yeah. So summing up, I think we could say that URL masking um, is neither good or bad, but it would tend to be bad depending on the method. Um, but really, why? Why, why, why bother? Uh, okay, we move on to the next. Excellent. Um, Lauren Engel, um, a schema for URLs with a query string. Um, she said that for URLs like slash shows, um, question mark, category equals current shows instead of the regular subfolders can they have their own schema still i think those can't have meta descriptions but i wasn't sure about schema you can you can have everything on those pages you just need to set it up yeah. Michael Martinez said, I don't know why they couldn't have their own meta descriptions. They will be treated like any other uh, indexable URLs by the search engine so they can have schema as well. Okay.
All right. Um, so in answer to the question, can they have their own schema still? Yes, they can. Very well. Um, let's go to number uh, eight on our run list uh, from Nathan Nikolai Gady. Um, it's titled, So No Follow Links Are Useless. Um, I don't know if that's true. Um, anyway, Nathan said, Hi. So No Follow Links uh, Are Useless or Just Less Worthy of Less Worthy Than, I Guess, uh, Follow Links? Um. No, because it, it depends on, 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 right, I'm going to have to go back to my tried and tested analogy here. Okay, Nicholas. Right, Nathan. Nathan. Right. You have a company that's just launched a new product. And that product gets mentioned in Forbes, right? And as in all of these you know, 90% uh, of all these places now, it they will no follow a link. If they even provided a link in the first place, they may have just said what the company's domain was and not even had a link. Now, that article, because it's a new product, etc. so whether it be no follow or not even have a link, because of that, all of a sudden, you have 50,000 people coming to your site right and out of that 50,000 5,000 actually convert and purchase right do you think that no follow link is useless now so what I'm trying to say to you is it's where any link is is of what is the map or it, it is what is what the um, important thing here is right you're still thinking link juice helping me you're not actually thinking about what a link can do for you yeah well tim all right let's move on to number nine on our run list we're charging through these nine down three to go amanda lewinsky a lot of ladies tonight, Tim. Um, redirect, it's, the question's titled, Redirecting All Traffic to the New Site and Close the Old. Uh, Amanda said, hi there, here's a dumb SEO question. I moved my site to a new domain, brackets, exact copy. How do I turn off the old one without impacting SEO? How do I tell Google it has moved? Uh, how do I redirect all traffic to the new site and close the old? Please be gentle. I'm not a geeky person. <clears throat> so if it was exact for exact, so all the pages were exact, the folders were exact, the categories were exact, so exact for exact, then you could use a catch-all 301 redirect. Which basically means if somebody goes, let's say they find a link to an old page, I don't know whether it be in your social media or they find a link somewhere um, or even Google finds an old link of a page of the old domain being uh, redirected, uh, sorry, in search results or whatever, and someone clicks on it, it 301 redirects them to the new location of that page, which is on the new domain. So they then see the same copy, the content, but it's on a new, or it's on the new domain. It's 301 redirecting. If you actually changed pages, categories, folder types, things like that, then you're going to have a bit more work on your hands. Then you will need to individually redirect the old site and internal pages to their new matching pages so for example <clears throat> your old domain which was bobs.com forward slash um stuffed elephant toys 
your on your new domain you actually just calling it gregs.com and you instead of the stuffed elephant toys in that domain your category you're just calling it elephant toys right because in your new site you've obviously you like segmented by stuff and stuff so the old one would then need to 301 redirect to that new actual url the same page but it's a slightly different url structure which you wouldn't be able to do with a catch-all 301 redirect you would need to individually re, you know map out your old urls to your new urls um but uh if you've never done this before i would recommend just paying a developer for a couple of hours to do this and hopefully you've done an exact copy uh, you say it's an exact copy um, he should just be able to put in a catch-all 301 redirect from old to new yeah good one tim and one thing to remember is to keep your old domain so that redirect keeps working um, so don't let it lapse um, hold on to it um, as long as possible and more or less sort of permanently um, it's usually quite cheap to maintain the domain, so don't let it go. Yep, good advice, Mr. Taki. All right, let's move on to number 10 on our run list from Shayo Che Lo. Um, search engine optimization on responsive design. Uh, if, uh, I'm trying to create a hover menu on desktop uh, slash click menu on the touch screen. Uh, from a, an SEO a search engine optimization perspective, uh, is it okay to use separate HTML elements for the desktop menu and touch screen menu? Or is it better to use the same set of elements and use CSS and JavaScript uh, cascading style sheets and JavaScript to achieve this? Thanks. Well, I, 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 I you go ahead. No, I have no answer for me. There's no, I don't know. Um, I, I shall refer, uh, shall to George G's, uh, answer which seems sensible to me but um as i say these kind of things are not really my domain yeah that's a good answer from george g isn't it and he left uh, a link to a good article I can't see that on here, but uh, no, we've got a, a bit of a bug in our um, scraping um, uh, machine. Yeah, it's it's not picking up um, links. No, but I, as I say, I assume that, that there was a a link to a good article. I assume that it was a a good article being linked to. <laughs> <laughs> and the the, the um, Link is it will would will be in on on, on the Damasio Christians Facebook group. All right, uh, let's go to number eleven. Multiple websites under the same hosting account. Uh, Rodrigo Bueno asks, uh, "Is there any danger to ranking websites in different niches under the same hosting account?" Hostgator in brackets. Uh, is there any danger to ranking websites in different niches under the same hosting account? Yeah, I don't know why that's repeated. No, it's not a problem. Uh, the only thing I would w worry is occasionally a site will end up in, a, let's say, a shared hosting or somewhere and there's like a lot of porn and stuff. And probably not the best idea to be associated with that via, you know, IPs. Um, Mm, then I would probably look at switching, but apart from that, no. Mm -hmm. no I agree totally with, with him. Um, you'll, 
on a on a shared uh, on a on a shared server, uh, you will have God knows how many sites. Um, they'll be in different. Uh, they'll probably be in loads of different niches. Um, if if this was a problem, then shared hosting wouldn't work at all, and most uh, most sites are on shared hosting. Um, so um, I see that Donna Blackwood says the only problem is HostGator. I can't actually, uh, I've never used HostGator, so I don't know. But um, I've successfully worked with loads of sites. Most sites I work with are on shared hosting. OK. Let's move on to number 12. Kabi Chan Yuet. Um, wants to know how should I publish my content? Um, he goes on to say, hello all, there's an old info niche book that I need to bring online. I'm thinking of optimizing the text further and making 5,000 plus uh, blog posts uh, from it. Does it matter if I publish all at once or 1,000 blogs a day or 100 blogs a day? or 10 blogs a day. Uh, there is no urgency from the author, but I want to bring traffic and authority to the site as soon as possible and start to upsell in other related products. Uh, many thanks. There's no problem in adding it all at once. You know, the minute they all go on, you've got a site map. <coughs> Google will still need to find it, crawl it, index it. Um, so if you chuck them all at once, I mean, just think of, some of these multinational sites have just created a brand that goes live in a day with thousands of pages and hundreds of thousands of products. You know, it's not an issue, you know. If you want to, if they're all ready to go, properly edited, interlinked uh, in the development side, um, you know, they, they're all 100% ready to go, do it. Hit the hit the live button. Have your site map with Search Console, but make sure that they're all properly done. What you don't want to be doing is doing them all like you know all at once, and then literally having to go through them and then properly interlink them and 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 um, you know interlink them through for uh, tidy them up. If they're one hundred percent ready to go, hit the publish button, man. Only, only thing I, I, I question: why, why are these blogs? Um, if it's a book, I think I would set them up as pages, as static content, and not have all the implied um, dates that come with blogs. Um, I think you should be thinking about these being pages and uh, and just publish them all at once as Tim said. <laughs> and if they're pages actually talking about it, they could be you could could use that new shit. What's it called that Google released this week? Google Web uh, no Google Oh what's it called? It, it's actually been around for a while. Yeah it but but pages, wasn't it? Yeah uh, but um but it's intended for publishers. Um, uh, fuck. Uh, Google. Web stories. Web stories, yeah. And the, the cool thing about it in this context, I think, Tim, is that Google have just released in beta a WordPress plugin. That that's, will do that's what I was thinking, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and essentially, if these were all pages, he could just put them into a web stories and people could just go next to read the next, to read the next, to read the next. You can interlink from each one. You can, um, I think when I saw the little video thing on it, you can put your calls to action actually on that page, individual calls to action that are relevant to that page. You can, and then the next, yeah. Ooh. So, yeah, we'll take, I don't know, what, 1% of the profits? Thanks, Carby. Just, you know, just from, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
No, but seriously, check it out. Apparently, it's pretty, you know, especially for publishing, if this is a book that you, yeah. Fair enough. All right, it's that time again. Uh, we've answered all of the questions asked on the Dumb SEO Questions Facebook group. Um, all right, I can't go without thanking the, the, the people that make uh, Dumb SEO Questions such a valuable resource. Um, people uh, on, on uh, the uh, Facebook group who answer questions daily, uh, uh, people like Michael Martinez and George G, uh, Brenda Michelin. Um, we thank you so much. And uh, Tim Kapper, uh, um, Masataki Wasa, and David Rosam, uh, thank you guys. Uh, thank you very, very much. We'll be back at the same time next week uh, to do this uh, all again. Um, but. Um, and, and for now, it's good night.